Good evening, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here with you. Um, uh, Scott had, had asked me to, uh, to come out and visit with all of you tonight and to talk to you a little bit about the, the deer tagging program from, an inst from a law enforcement standpoint. And uh, I, w I want to give you a little bit of history and background on, on why we got the deer, pro deer tagging program. And uh, a couple of reasons, of course, from the management standpoint, from the information that, that, uh, that uh, Scott and uh, the Wildlife Division on the management side uh, use this information. Uh, we felt like it'd give us much more accurate harvest data uh, and, and accuracy as to where deer are being harvested in the state and when. Uh, they're being harvested uh, during the season, and I've seen some some good graphs, some good information uh, that has come from uh, those those harvest records has helped and uh, uh, with the management and uh, as Scott said, to give us some ideas to go forward with seasons and and bag limits and and uh, things that we'll do uh, in deer management uh, in the future. The other thing, from a law enforcement standpoint. <coughs> uh, as, as you know, for many, many years, and I know going way back, uh, when I was a small kid, I can barely remember whenever we did have a deer tagging system in place uh, where, you, where you went and bought it. I see a few heads, some gray hair like mine is nodding back there going, yeah. And uh, um, uh, we had that, and then, then we did away with that tagging system many, many years ago and went to a, a, an honor system uh, on the season limit uh, for deer and for turkey. And uh, we were in that posture for, for a great many years. And um, I've been in law enforcement, uh, I've been with the department for 32 years. And uh, a lot of those years I spent out in the field. And, and, and when I came in as, as a supervisor and staff here and in the office, getting those complaints and those reports from you, uh, from the legal hunters out there who were saying, reporting people who were killing over the limit of deer, uh, both in, on a daily basis and, 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 and very uh, frequently on a season basis of high, high numbers of deer that they were killing illegally. Uh, the same situation happening with turkey. And uh, basically when you're in an honor system like that, it's just about impossible to be able to make an over-season limit uh, harvest case. Um, so one of the big uh, considerations, and, and Dave Moreland was the Chief of Wildlife Division, and I was here working, and we, Dave and I had a lot of conversations over the years and developing and working on the, the tagging system and coming up with different ideas of how to do it uh, to ultimately come up with the system that we initiated in the 0708 season. And uh, we know, and, and I've hunted as you probably have, I know I've hunted in other states throughout the country, I've been lucky enough to do that on occasion, and I've hunted in other areas of the state where tagging, tag system is in place. And, uh, and, and being a law enforcement officer and talking with law enforcement officers who, in, who had a tagging system in their state, uh, there are ways to beat it. Um, and we all know that, but uh, it does give us, it gives us some, some basic air place to start it gives us a tool to work with uh, that does help us with season limit enforcement and also with with daily limit enforcement where that applies um, uh, starting the system here in louisiana in 0708 it was a voluntary system and we had asked people to to use it to to try it it wasn't mandatory a uh, year before last i say year before last hunting season before last it wasn't mandatory at that time um, a lot of people, I don't think, actually did, uh, at least the hunters that I knew and, and that I hunted on my lease and all that, didn't really uh, take advantage of that opportunity uh, to learn to use it. This year with the uh, 0809 season, we went into the season with it being mandatory. And uh, we also knew that uh, any time that you start a new program where you're, where you're doing enforcement of new regulations, there needs to be an education process. And there needs to be a higher level of tolerance uh, of, uh, for mistakes that, that we can perceive and, and know that those are honest mistakes. And it's just something p new that people aren't familiar with. We talked about that segment of, of hunters out there and the, the senior hunters who uh, are, are out there. And, and around home, I know, I know my dad and, and those guys in that age group uh, that are retired, those guys are out there hunting and fishing. I hope to join them soon, but they're out there, they're out there hunting and fishing and they're, and they're, they're doing and, and, uh, and they're taking a lot of deer and that's a wonderful thing. Um, but also I know that whenever I'm out there checking those people, uh, you know, and they're out there harvesting those deer, 
uh, you got to you you've got to have a lot of understanding and 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 work with those people to get them because it's a new program and it's something uh, that they're challenged to have to do, especially whenever they kill a deer right before dark and they're trying to get back to the truck or get the deer out of the woods and all that. And a new system with trying to remember to get that tag out and put it on. Uh, you got to have some tolerance there, and uh, um, we we did our best to to uh, to let our officers know that we put some standard operating procedures in place to tell them how to address these situations uh, uh, to get everybody through this first season. We had a a lot initially, a, a lot of of complaints. I don't mind telling you and, and complaining about the tagging system, as a lot of people became aware of it. Why did y'all do this? This? Why do we need this? Why do we have to have that? And the, the department did a great job, both the Wildlife Division and Law Enforcement Division, I think, in explaining the program and 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 telling people why why we need to have it. And uh, I noticed the difference when when turkey season came around, when the spring co gobbler season came up this year, we uh, we didn't have as much problem with tagging people had gotten used to the idea uh, they were uh, they had had uh, become familiar with it and we saw good compliance overall uh, with turkey tagging and uh, I think when we come into deer season this year when deer season starts off this year uh, we'll see much better compliance and and people uh, uh, a lot more familiar with it biggest ones that, that had to be uh, reminded uh, were the lifetime hunter license holders because uh, as my son, I went and bought my son when he was a little guy. I took advantage of that price break, and I went and bought his lifetime license. And I told him, you won't appreciate that now, but when you get old enough to have to start buying them, you will. And he found that to be very true. But like he and a lot of other those hunters, you got to remind them, you know, you go get your tax because they were used to just not having to go purchase license, had their license in the pocket, didn't have to worry about that. Uh, if they belonged to a club that was enrolled in DMAP or LADT, they went and got their, their antlerless deer tags, but that was about all they had to, to worry about. So we saw that, that, you know, with lifetime hunters, that was one of the big areas where those people had to be reminded uh, to go out and, and acquire the tags, which, of course, at no cost, but they do had to get, uh, get them and, and start using them. Some of the uh, information we just wanted to show you, um, <clears throat> well, what cases that we did make and, and considering the number of hunters uh, that Scott reported to you that were out there this year when you only had 403 criminal citations uh, issued <clears throat> for tagging violations, we, we think we had pretty good compliance. Uh, we also issued another, another 132 uh, warning citations, and those situations were, again, you know, we encouraged officers use good judgment when you see where this is a, a, a violation of law, but it was an honest mistake or a mistake, uh, you know, that, that, that a hunter can make. Uh, give them the benefit of the doubt, issue the warning citation, or issue a verbal warning. Um, civil restitution. Civil restitution, we have that where uh, whenever fish or wildlife has been taken illegally, uh, the restitution process allows the department to recover the, the value of, of that particular animal. And uh, the process that we have in place for that now um, is that uh, we fill out a, a restitution summons, which is essentially another ticket uh, in addition to the criminal citation that's filled out when, some, when there was an animal taken in a situation that was grievous enough or clear violation of criminal intent uh, to take that animal illegally. And uh, we will ask the judge to, to approve that restitution request or, or, or a court order uh, asking the judge to approve that to mandate that in addition to the fine that's paid for the violation, the replacement value of the animal is paid to the department. And uh, one thing I like to point out to people is that the fines that are collected, not a dime of any fine money for a citation comes back to the Department of Wildlife and Fisheries. All fines go to into the judicial system for that parish or that judicial court system where the citation was issued. So the department does not draw any money from fines. So we're not out there head hunting and try to try to increase our, our pocketbook. But the restitution uh, is based on the amount of, of, of money that is spent, uh, that's budgeted uh, for wildlife management and, and for the enforcement program and the different programs that go to promulgate, protect, and enhance wildlife populations out there. The department does in those instances where the court approves it, uh, they do, we do recoup uh, restitution value for that particular animal. 
And one of the interesting things about it is we kind of have we have flat fees in in place, and the the flat fee for a deer I think is four hundred and twenty four dollars, something like that. And and I noticed that some of the other states have gone to different values because we all know that a twelve point one hundred and sixty five class buck is worth more to all of us than a than a six month old antlerless deer. And uh, so some of the states have gone to placing dis different restitution values on uh, different deer based on, on sex and, and on antler size and some of the other considerations in that.